In this video, I'm going to show you how I have set up Starlink and Cellular in combination to give super reliability for an end customer. And in this case, the end customer is super important. It's my mum at her house. Yeah. Uh, and we all know how much support our parents need from time to time. So I'm going to show you how I support her as well. So here we are. This is the uh, router interface for the Balance 20X that I've got deployed there. And we can see straight away in priority one, we've got Starlink connected and cellular as well. Uh, and then down at the bottom here, we've got something called Speed Fusion Connect Protect. And this is what I'm using to protect the most important traffic. Let me show you how I've got it set up. So if we dive into here uh, and click client mode, what we've basically told the device to do is to connect automatically to the lowest latency pop point of presence. Now, if we want, we can choose different points of presence. So here we've got uh, different places in the world. Uh, I'm in the UK, so it's naturally found London as the closest one at 33 milliseconds. I'm going to leave that on automatic for now. Now, underneath, we've got some configuration here. Uh, and this configuration is about setting up tunnels, logical tunnels between me and that point of presence in London that enable us to apply technologies and techniques on the traffic that I send that way to improve its quality and reliability. So uh, there's a single logical connection point to point, and then inside of that connection, I can have different sub tunnels that have different technologies applied. So tunnel one, uh, which is this one, I'm calling it dynamic bonding, and that's because I've turned on dynamic weighted bonding. Makes sense, right? Uh, dynamic weighted bonding is a technique that lets the router look at the quality of all the connected links and send traffic most effectively down the link that's got the best quality metrics at that time. And it's also very good at squeezing bandwidth out of links, which we'll see in a minute. So what I'm saying here is use dynamic bonding. Uh, I've turned on a feature called TCP ramp up because um, Starlink has TCP optimization built in and that this ramp up feature lets us um, push the Starlink connection as hard as we can right from the start to uh, reduce the time it takes to ramp up the connection. Hopefully I'll be able to show you that too. And then I've turned on dynamic weighted bonding. I've left everything as defaults here. And at the bottom, what I said is uh, I want Starlink and cellular. And if there's mobile internet connected, because on this device we can plug in a USB dongle as well, I think, um, then include all of those connections in there in this tunnel. Uh, and use them all uh, in the dynamic weighted bonded link, which is very cool. And then I've also got a second tunnel here, tunnel number two, it's called WAN smoothing. Now, what does WAN smoothing do? It duplicates all traffic over all links. Why would you do that? Well, uh, for very important traffic that you definitely absolutely have to get to from here to where it's going with the lowest latency and the most reliability, we turn on WAN smoothing. And WAN smoothing, duplicates all the packets across all the available links to guarantee delivery to the remote end. So what have I got here? I've got WAN smoothing turned on. I've got it set to normal. Um, and I've not enabling forward error correction because I don't need it in this case. And uh, the traffic distribution is set to bonding. I'm going to change that to uh, dynamic weighted bonding, I think. Yes. And then I've got which links are in use, which are these here. Uh, in fact, no, I'm going to leave that as bonding because I, I want it to uh, distribute the link, the these packets across the available links. I don't want it to do any sort of dynamic tran um, transposition of the data, so that's fine. Uh, so that's speed, the Speed Fusion Connect. Now, how do I actually use this when it's set up? I can use it in two ways. I can route application, or well, three ways, but I'm using it in two. I'm routing it by application, and I'm also going to do it by the LAN client. So if we look at the routing by application, here what I'm saying is, if you see any of these kinds of traffic, then send it. use dynamic weighted bonding to send and receive that traffic across the links. Why am I doing that? Well, let's take Dropbox as an example. Uh, I have got about 10 meg of upload on my Starlink connection. If uh, my customer, or my mother in this case, were to dump a load of photos from her phone into Dropbox, uh, th those the upload would be limited to 10 meg. But if I'm using dynamic bonding, and I've got cellular as well, and the cellular in this case is unlimited, 
then I can actually combine the cellular upload and Starlink upload to increase her upload capacity. And um, depending on the time of the day, that will take the upload from 10 meg on Starlink alone to 40 meg or so with cellular and Starlink combined. Really good deal. And it also improves the reliability of the traffic too. So Office 365, Exchange, big emails going backwards and forwards. Let's use bonding to improve the bandwidth, available bandwidth for that type of traffic. And at the bottom here, I've got WAN smoothing. Now remember, WAN smoothing duplicates packets, so there's a bandwidth cost to it, right? You're doubling the amount of bandwidth needed to send and receive the data that you want to, uh, to, to send and receive. So uh, we don't want to use this on everything, but for in really important real-time traffic, in this case, uh, video, Teams, and Zoom, I want to make sure that that works no matter what, I'm going to use both my connections at the same time to guarantee that traffic. So really good user experience of video is now achievable, even when the Starlink has got a bit of packet loss or is, uh, you know, hopping between satellites. The other way I'm using this is by routing LAN clients. So on site, there is a VoIP handset. And I want all VoIP traffic to be to go over that second subtunnel, the WAN smoothing tunnel, to guarantee delivery and reception of VoIP. So that's what I've done. Turned on WAN smoothing for this particular handset. Now, how have we done that? Well, we've uh, we're using DHCP on this router. So if I go to status and clients, I can see a list of clients on here. And uh, for the phone, which is there, 168.1.100, I've hit the, the tag button at the end, which adds a DHCP reservation. So I know the IP address of the phone is not going to change. Uh, that therefore means that um, uh, we can use those outbound rules by, uh, by IP address. So what's the upshot of all of this? Well, uh, Let's do a speed test and let me show you how traffic is actually used. So if I come here and I pick, I'm going to open up a graph so you can see a bit more information about the WAN links in a second. And then I've got, there's an inbuilt speed test tool here. And as you can see, we've got the two connections that are live, Starlink and Cellular. I'm going to do a download test. I'm going to run it for uh, 20 seconds is a bit short. Let's run it for 30 seconds and hit start. And what we'll see here is immediately, straight away, we've got a combination of Starlink with 100 meg and cellular at 3, uh, 3 meg. Uh, and bandwidth is variable, but that's to be expected on both Starlink and cellular. And I know cellular in this area, it's in the deepest, darkest countryside, is a bit weak, right? Or rather, the signal strength is good, but there's a lot of people using Vodafone in the area, so there's a lot of shared bandwidth. So we'll see here bandwidth on cellular range from 3 meg to 20 meg to half a meg. Um, there's a big range there. Uh, so we've got an average of 90 meg. Uh, we can see some peaks here uh, of 129 meg. Uh, but what's important is that it's managed the traffic uh, that's been sent over, the, over that tunnel. And if we go and look at the graphs, we can see uh, a couple of things actually, which are going to be quite interesting. So here's the Starlink connection. And we can see that Starlink was used very heavily there uh, for the download. So Starlink in blue, cellular in red. We can see download here of say 86 meg at this point. And if you come across to the combined graph over here, you can see that we've got Starlink at 86 meg. And then you've got the red uh, stacked part of the graph, which is coming from the cellular. And the cellular was reaching you know, at times, let's see, so I hover my cursor a bit better. Uh, so it's 12 meg of, of bandwidth there. So that's good. Now, what we can also see is that the Starlink had significant packet loss during this period. All of those little red triangles are packet loss on the, uh, the uplink. And then here we've still got a little bit of packet loss on the downlink. Over here in cellular, we can see no packet loss on the uplink, but look, we've got a little bit of packet loss on the downlink. And the packet loss is coinciding with a, bit, uh, a spike of latency. And that was when we just started first and she loaded that cellular connection looking for bandwidth right at the beginning of the test. So we tried to find bandwidth, latency spiked, packet loss started. So then Dynamic Bonding stopped using that link for a bit and then tried it again later on. You see how it's trying to manage how much bandwidth it's sending over that link at any one time. What's interesting though, is that over here, uh, if you look at the uplink, 
there's no packet loss. Well, why is that? Well, because it's uh, used the cellular for the for the upload packet loss, right? We've got a little bit of packet loss on the downlink, and that's because we saw packet loss here on Starlink, and we were favoring that because of its bandwidth availability. So it, the challenge here is that to achieve the level of bandwidth you wanted, we have to compromise a little bit with a degree of packet loss. Now let's look at the upload path and do the same test but go the other way. So we're pushing data up now rather than pulling it down. And what's the difference here? Well, we can see 30 meg of 35 meg of upload on cellular. There's only a couple of meg going over the, the Starlink connection at the moment. Six meg, seven meg, it's starting to load that up now. Um, but we've got packet loss on the Starlink. So when it sees enhanced packet loss, it's going to um, it's going to slow down a bit, right? And we come nearly to the end of the test. Scroll down. So we've got an average upload here of 35 meg. That's combining Starlink and cellular. Let's have a close look at the graph, see what happened. Yeah, really interesting, right? So most of the upload came from cellular, as we'd expect. However, cellular did suffer a significant uh, latency situation there, right? The latency has risen quite significantly. Um, and uh, and we can see that to try and combat the latency, Dynamic Worthy One has kicked in and done a number of things. It's spotted, it's got out of order packets here. So it's immediately applied um, some duplicate packets. It's done on WAN smoothing to try and deal with out of order packets and the, the latency issue that's been caused by cellular. So it's dynamically reacting to how the links are presenting themselves. But however you look at it, we've now got a significantly more bandwidth. There's 43 meg at one point there, which was combining Starlink and Cellular. Very cool. Uh, I'll stop this video here. It's already quite long. Uh, next thing I want to show you is InTouch and how I remotely support devices there. I'll do that as another video in just a sec.